Conclusions are not islands. Conclusions are not islands. What I mean by this is that, look, it's more familiar to, to talk about how, and, and we're going to hit this, but how an argument is only good as the premises behind it, the steps that you take to get to the conclusion. Okay, that, that one's more familiar. But this is sort of the reverse of it. Someone will give you an idea. This is a conclusion that they've reached. And you need to train yourself when, when someone gives you you know, their, their data point, their conclusion. You need to train yourself to ask, okay, if that's true, what other things must also be true? Because no conclusion just lives by itself without touching other ideas, okay? When someone, again, makes their argument, if you, it's a good exercise to say, okay, well, let, let's assume that's the case. If that's true, what else has to be true? Because you can think of things that relate that hook into this idea. And on the other side, what other things therefore can't be true? Because if you can find exceptions on either side of that, then you know the conclusion is not sound. Conclusions should never be embraced as though they just operate alone. There is no isolated conclusion, especially in, in you know, the kind of subjects that we deal with. You know, the, theological subjects, biblical interpretation, you know, interpretation of ancient history or texts or whatever. You can reach a conclusion that, and it, it might sound good, it might be operable, might be coherent, might be on the table, but it's never the only one, okay? And if it is true, then it has to extend somewhere else.